Opto22's Edge Programmable Industrial Controller, Groove Epic, has a lot of different ways that it can be accessed and controlled and programmed, as well as methods like the pack control and code sys runtimes and things like Node Red, you also have Secure Shell Access as an option, or SSH. In this video, I'll explain exactly what that means, what it looks like to set it up, and how to use some of the very basic functionality. From there, you'll have a good understanding of how to get your feet wet and if this might be a good method for you. The best place to start is with the version of Linux that's running on Epic. In this case, we refer to that version as a distribution of Linux, and you might be familiar with this if you've worked with Linux before. In this case, we are running a custom distribution of Linux for Groove Epic. That's not to say it's proprietary. It's custom made for Groove Epic, but it's made under the open source Yocto project, and we'll have a link to that in the description below. Using Yocto, our engineers are able to specifically decide what will be and what will not be included in this distribution. This allows us to include things like real-time control, the pack control runtime, the code sys runtime, having node red built in, and many other requirements that we have. It also means that we don't include any extra bloat that we might not want. For example, different drivers or pieces of software that simply have no place in a programmable logic controller. In order to keep this distribution safe, it is cryptographically signed by our engineers and only our engineers can upload new firmware that you can run on your Epic. You also can't put this software anywhere else. So it is a secure system, but that's not to say that it's not still open source. And with that said, it is just Linux running on a processor. If you are familiar with Linux and working through it on a command line or a terminal, then this should be very familiar to you. If you have any questions and you look something up, chances are it'll apply to an Epic just like it would any other Linux processor, with a couple of caveats that I'll discuss in a little while. So with that said, let's dive in and I could have a look at how this is set up, how you access the command line for the Linux running on the processor, and what you can do with it. We'll start by logging into the Groove Epic that I already have set up here. The first thing you'll need to do is apply a free shell license to the specific processor that you want to have shell access to. You can do that by going to our website, and we'll have a link for that in the description below. Just download the new shell file and upload it through Groove Manage. And you'll have this option here under System and Shell. You can see that when you first start this up, we don't have anything running. That's because by default, when you just purchase an Epic right off the shelf, it does not have shell access enabled. Now, it is still running the same Linux runtime, we're just not letting you have access to it. That's because you can do get up to a lot of trouble once you get in here. So be very mindful of the password you choose and who you give access. This is a very powerful tool and you must treat it with respect. So with that said, let's go ahead and start this up. I'm going to just create a nice simple user. And before I hit account, I'm also going to make another note of that and keep that note very secure and safe. If I forget this password, there is no way to recover it from either Opto's side or the user side. You simply have to completely restart your device by taking a paperclip and completely resetting the entire system. So be very mindful of what this password is and the fact that you should save it. With that said, I'll go ahead and create this account and take note of the shell license agreement. Now I've read this a couple of times already, so I am going to sort of skim over it, but if you are applying a shell license, you should read through this in its entirety. The big part that you need to take note of here is that you must accept full responsibility for troubleshooting and resolving any and all issues that come up with shell access. The reason for this is simply because you can get up to a lot of trouble with full admin access to the device. You can take down firewalls, move and delete files, create copies of files, rename them, all sorts of things. And we can't necessarily help you with any issues that might crop up from doing that. That's not to say that you're left out on your own. We still will, of course, try to take care of any customers that choose to go this route. But at the end of the day, if you want full support on our device, you will have to reset it and make sure everything is working with the device as is, and then go back through your steps again. Now be aware that resetting and doing a firmware update will lose any and all progress done on shell access. This is because it's simply impossible to back up the entirety of what you could get up to in there. So definitely take notes when you're developing through Shell so that if you do want to do a firmware update down the line, you can repeat your work and get back to where you were. With that said, I'm willing to accept responsibility for what I'm about to do in here, so I'll go ahead and click accept. We'll see now that the SSH server is being started. This just means that a port, 
port 22 is being opened in the Epic Firewall so that I can visit it from my PC here. This port was not open before applying this license and agreeing to that, so if you don't want to apply this, simply leave it turned off. Once the user is created and the connection is open, when I click OK and go back to the shell screen, we'll see that right after it loads, here I can see that the SSH server is running. Now I do have to put my shell username and password in to disable it, but I can lock that port down after I'm completed my work, and I strongly recommend you do that. There is a security vulnerability in having a port open, and anyone that figures out your username and password is able to get in there, and you want to be really mindful of that. I highly recommend you open up this connection, do any developing that you need to do, and then close it up again, and it will continue running in the background, since, like I said, the Linux is always running. That is the operating system of the device. This simply opens and closes our access to it. So I'll go ahead and leave that open, and we'll go ahead and connect to the device. In order to connect to a device with secure shell access, you need to use what's called an SSH client, a secure shell client. You can use a standard terminal if you're on a Linux or Mac system, but for PC, I'm going to use another program. In this case, it's called PuTTY. But if you just Google it and come to this link at the top here, putty.org, you can see that it's very simple to download. You just come here, grab the latest package file for your system, and you'll be able to boot it up right away. Here, I already have it installed, so I'll go ahead and bring open the program. Here we can see it's pretty straightforward how it's all set up. It already has the connection type set to SSH by default, as well as the port 22, which is the port we'll be using. All you have to do then is put in your hostname or IP address, in my case that's Epic Dev, and click open. That's all you need to do to connect. But in order to make it easier to connect next time, I will put a saved session name in here and click saved so I can just simply select Epic Dev and then select load in order to get my connection. To make it a little easier for you to see on this screen cap, I'll also come into my appearance and increase my font size. Now when I click open, here we go. The first thing I see here is this alert, because this is my first time connecting to this SSH server, this Epic. If I don't trust this system, this could be a dangerous connection, which is why I'm getting the warning. Since I do trust the device and the connection, I'll go ahead and select yes, and we'll see that I get a login prompt. Now, when I go to log in, I don't use Groove Manage accounts. I only have that one SSH account that I just created when I applied the license. So I'll put in my username, press enter, and then when I'm prompted for the password and type it in, you'll see that nothing shows up even though I was typing. This is so that nobody knows what your password is or how long it is. Even though it's not there, if I go ahead and press enter, we'll see, there we go, I'm in the device. Here I have a listing that lists my user that I created, opto, the at symbol to then separate from the actual device I'm connected to, epic dev, and then my location in the file system, which is currently home, which is what's represented by that little squiggle there, that tilde. So in order to get a full listing of where I'm at, I can type in path working directory, pwd, and we'll see I'm in a new home folder created for the user I made, opto. Now I can also feel free to list whatever files are here, create new ones, and so forth. I'm now in the device. This is a standard terminal. The first thing I should do are make sure that I have the most up-to-date packages available to install on my device. In order to manage the different packages and pieces of software, we use what's called apt-get, or the advanced packaging tool. This apt tool is very common across different Linux distributions, so if you're used to using it, this should look very familiar. In this case, I will call on sudo, and I will do apt get update, since I want to update the apt get tool so that I have the most recent packages. You'll also note that I'm doing sudo at the start. This basically means super user do. We're gonna perform this as the root user, not as this opto user, since we need permission to access everything on the device, and the opto user does have some limitations. We can get around the limitations and security restraints by using this sudo command. But you'll notice when I press enter, two things happen. Firstly, because it's my first time trying to run something as root, I am getting a warning that I should respect the privacy of others, think before I type, and that with great power comes great responsibility. Now this third one is very important because opto as a user may not necessarily be able to fully access the system and break things down a little bit, but the root user could tear down firewalls, delete system files, and quite, cause quite a bit of havoc. So with that incredible power where I can do all these amazing things, I can also do potentially very destructive things. So with that great power, 
there must also come great responsibility. You always want to be careful what commands you're running with sudo. In this case, I'm just updating apt-get, so I'll go ahead and put my password in. Here we go. It's now going out to archive.opto22.com and receiving a bunch of these different packages. Now, it's important to note that it is in fact going to archive.opto22.com. That's where the packages are stored in what's called a software repository. This repository or repo is just that, just a collection of software sitting in a cloud somewhere. In this case, Opto22 itself manages each and every package in that repository specifically for the Groove Epic PR1 version 3.0. So for a different firmware update, we might add more packages or increase the security of what's already there. We're constantly working to improve this so it isn't static, but you can't just go out and download whatever you want. Some of the biggest advantages of having this managed repository that's handled by the Opto engineers is that everything up there should work just fine on the Epic since we've tested it and ran it through its paces. And it also means that there shouldn't be anything damaging up there that you could potentially pull down and either brick your system or otherwise cause damage to your network. So now that I've got my full package list updated, I want to go ahead and actually run some programs. So in order to do that, I'm going to be using Python. But you should know that there are versions of the GNU Compiler Collection, or GCC, that supports C++ compiling, as well as Node, which can handle JavaScript compiling, as well as many other pieces of software. Once you're in here, the world is pretty much your oyster. You can do whatever you want, as long as you know what you're doing, and you're being safe about it. In this case, I'll want to install the package manager for Python packages, called pip. So I'll do sudo apt-get install python pip. See, here we go. We'll see that I do have zero to upgrade and two newly installed packages here. So I'll go ahead and click Y. Yes, I want to continue. I want to install this Python pip. So it's pulling down the files from the repository, installing them, and it should come up on my system now. The next thing I'm going to do is use this pip Python package manager to go ahead and install a custom Opto MMP programming library that I can use to easily communicate with the IO on my Epic here. And then I'll type in sudo pip install opto mmp. This will go out to the python package index and it'll go ahead and grab this opto mmp package and you'll see here it's coming down at version 0.4 and install it. So there we go, I've already installed a python package. Now I can bring open any python script and when I go to run it I'll be able to access the features of this library. You can learn more about this in the links below but I'll just go over some really quick basic programming here now. If you're not familiar with Python, don't worry too much about it. You don't need to know all of this in order to program the Epic. You can use other languages and other methods as well. For example, you can use the HTTP RESTful interfaces that you might be used to using with other Groove devices or other API services. You have many options, this is just one example. Here I am simply creating a connection using this opto MMP library and creating a connection object for my Groove Epic. Then I just use that object to set the digital point state over this connection, and I'm pulling in the values that I used to do this directly from the command line. I'll be able to type in different variables when I run this script, and they'll determine what point gets toggled. Then I simply close my connection, and I'm good to go. So I'll just click exit, save this file, and if I want to see it here, I can just type in the command ls that will list the files, and you can see, there we go, I have created this new test.py file here. So now, all there is to run it. But before I run it, I want to see which point we're toggling. So let's pull this off to the side for now. In order to see what points are available and to see them change, I'll go back to my home, select IO, and come to this digital out here. I can choose any one of these points I want, so I'll just grab one at random, let's say digital output 8. I can even give this a name, something like Python output. Now, I won't need to refer to it by Python output, I'll be referring to it by channel 8 on module 0. You can see that's here at the top, as well as in the URL at the top of the browser here. So here we go, I've got a nice clean console here now, and we're ready to run our test.py Python script. So I'll call the Python runtime with just Python, and hand it in the different values I need. First it needs to know what script it's running, that's test.py what the digital module is, which is module zero, and exactly which channel we're writing, in this case channel eight, and finally the value we want to write. In this case we're turning it on, so I'll send it the value one. 
So now I'll simply press enter and right away we can see that it's turned on. I don't have this wired into anything so we are getting a quality error but we can see that the control worked just fine. Now I can just call the last command by pressing the up arrow and now we'll backspace that one and put a zero in, press enter and there we go it's toggled back off. Now this is a very simplified example. We're simply turning something on and off that we could just as easily do from within Groove Manage. But the fact is that I'm doing this from a Python script. I could start programming loops in here. I could measure analog inputs and do complicated math on them in order to toggle different outputs or enable or disable different things across the system. I can also use other Python libraries. I could use pip to install the requests library and then I would have access to any HTTP requests I want to make. I could post this data to another API service, I could request weather data from another service, I could even connect to a database and use Python to do the logging here if I wanted. Really, this is just an example of showing how the technology works and that it truly is very diverse. If you want to learn more about this, there are a lot of resources about how to program in Python and in JavaScript and in C++ or any other method you might want to use through Linux. Really, the best way to do it is to just get in there and learn. You should just be mindful that with great power, there must also come great responsibility. So once you are in here and you get comfortable, don't stop being vigilant. You want to keep your system safe and it's always good to develop on one system and then perhaps deploy it on a different one so that you're not making changes on something that's actively running. Since there's a lot that you can do here that's extremely powerful and enables a lot of different abilities, but it can also be very dangerous. So just be mindful of what you do before you do it and take good notes. Whether you're an experienced Linux developer or maybe you just want to get started with this for the first time on Groove Epic, feel free to drop some comments below with any thoughts or questions that you might have. We also have some great forums that we'd be happy to answer any other questions there and you'll be able to find the link in the description below.